Hey guys, welcome back. It's Green Reaper coming at you for another video of Fresh Shadows. Hopefully, you're doing well and hopefully, you're looking after yourselves. Uh, hopefully, you're having a great week, right? It's been quite busy. It's looking a bit odd in raid with rumors about another fusion going on starting from Thursday, which I really hope is not true. It is due because this fusion was like a week late, but hopefully, it's not true. Uh, I suppose we we'll, might see some news drop today or uh, a bit later on this week but it's interesting let me know down in the comments what do you guys think about a new fusion is it too soon do you think we're in mythical fusion do you think a bit epic fusion i think it's a bit too early to see the halloween fusion halloween fusions normally do suck to be honest um but their memes are kind of cool so uh, and the art is always good right so might be a good one i actually might actually skip if it's not a valid one anyway i went to to get into today's video because on a weekend i was very very lucky and i was able to pull um blood Morge right from uh, the cursed city uh crushed cursed remnants I, I think if that's correct um and i was able to pull it from one of them she's my first mythical and i've cleared every single rotation except from the first rotation and i've never been able to get a mythical from them so do have her first one she is a pretty cool champion i wouldn't say she's s tier because carnage and mezama are definitely way ahead of her but uh she does have some good utility i'm gonna go through her kit very quickly uh i will try and make it quick as possible uh you guys can obviously go check her kit out a bit more in detail but she's great in Hydra and Arena, which is where we're going to be showcasing her. I'm actually pretty happy that I did get her. She's definitely not in my top 10 picks, but she is a new mythical, and I'm pretty grateful for that. And she is usable in Live Arena, which is where I want to get the mythicals from. Now, if I get Toshi or whatever his name is, he's fantastic in Hydra for damage, but I probably would be slightly disappointed. If I'm being honest, because of me being a P versus a P person, but she is fantastic in both locations. Unfortunately, she ain't gonna make my Hydra team, but I'll get into a bit later on in the video why she wouldn't get into my Hydra team. But we're definitely gonna build her out. So I've got two builds for her today. I will need you guys to really pay attention to this so you receive the correct information that I would like to try and give you guys in today's video. Anyway, so the first form she is HG base. She does have a shield on the A1, uh, so it removes shields on A1, and she does attack and increases the cooldown of a random skill by 2. If it lands, uh, it's a 50% chance, so uh, it can ignore 20% resistance. Uh, she can attack on enemies, place a provoke on all enemies for one turn, place the unkillable on herself for three turns. That's pretty nice with the unkillable, probably one of the longest in the game. I think it is actually the longest in the game. She removes all buffs from debuffs from their allies and then places a 50% uh, increase uh, ally protection on the champion for two turns, which is pretty cool. Um, and then when she has attacked, she can put the buffs on a cooldown. So she's going to be really funky in like go second teams for myself with the ally protection, the shields, etc. It is quite useful. I do know and take Narsus first. So. She definitely does fit into that category of me making the team a bit more difficult, especially if I've got like a UDK there or some of that. And then she has absolute beast of a nuke on an A1, which is an AUE. It's 20% chance of repeating attack. Uh, she attack all enemies. The damage does increase by 10 for each debuff on this champion. So each buff on this champion. So like if you stack them up, it does really help for damage. And then she will ignore 30% of the target defense. Uh, and then she will get herself a 25% uh, chance of teaming up with a ally on the team and increasing uh, and and do basically doing an A1. And then she has a 20% chance on top to do that as well. And then a damage increases by 1% for each 1% of HP she loses. So very interesting kit. Definitely not a bad champion. She does have a lot of utility for myself. So. We're going to go ahead and take her into Hydra. We're going to start with the Hydra run for this. So this will be the Hydra team that will do uh, a quick run. Now, you guys know this team fairly well. This is part of my one 
billion team. And if you want to see any of these five champions other than uh, Blood Mole, then I would say go ahead and check out the video that I'll drop down in the comments and you guys can go ahead and check that out. You will see all the builds here with the timestamps, etc, etc, etc. We will compare her as well to uh, two other teams that we will basically dropped recently on YouTube. Uh, so you guys might be aware of these already. So you can go ahead and skip that if you want. But I would generally would say it's probably better not to. Anyway, enjoy the run. Enjoy the music. And I'll see you on the other side.
Okay, so you can see here, this is the damage. We only took it to 50 turns. She could definitely do damage when we're talking about Hydra. And you could basically see that she's on the same level, more or less, on as a uh, Vlad the Destroyer. Now, she can do a bit more damage if her masteries and stuff were tailored a bit more towards Hydra, which I definitely would not uh, avoid. I also don't have good Monty Slayer set. So she's not in the Slayer set, which would be the best build and would increase her damage a bit more as well. And there's also affinity. The, the affinity for this rotation is probably not for the best for her, especially throughout this run. There's a lot of magic popping up. So that could also uh, enhance her damage to come down slightly. But overall, solid. Honestly, this would be pretty solid for 99% of people in the community. And a really solid champion overall. So you can't be upset with that. We are going to go ahead and compare her with the Dark Health champion. Who was recently buffed. And this was the damage from this team. Uh, who also has affinity problems. And he is packing a 136 million damage by turn 50. Which you can see here. Uh, if you have a look. This is turn 50. Or basically turn 49 damage at yeah, turn 50 there as well so definitely you can see there that it's um she's definitely not the best champion on my account and this is why unfortunately she will not make the hydro teams for my account because i already use wick spell cheese for um for nightmare and i use like a trunder setup uh, a bit lower level so she doesn't fit in any of these so i only run one traditional team which is generally this now obviously you guys that watch my channel would know that Carnage is a big fan of mine and I do love Carnage. Carnage is built more towards speed teams and uh, fast uh, style of play for Live Arena. And then she will now come in as like a go second kind of uh, option with like the ally, uh, ally, uh, ally attack, etc. Right, not ally attack, ally protection, etc. Of the shields, etc. With her kits, so that will kind of play in hand. And you can see here, Carnage just basically destroys Hydra and is doing nearly as double melt as damage overall. That you can kind of see does its own thing. Now we will get the masteries up because we'll talk about masteries a bit later on uh, when we are doing other parts of the showcase. Now, again, we are going to go ahead and do a damage test on her in Dragon. So we're in Dragon 25, which is uh, a force affinity where she is quite good affinity. And then we're just going to see what our damage is basically like on a second form. So you guys can kind of see what the damage test is. Now, she's a HP base. Uh, no, she is actually a tap base, right? So we should bring increased attack to kind of see a damage, which is... Uh, my mistaken there so i'm going to go ahead and i'm actually going to go get a increase attack champion because we do want to do this correctly uh which is my mistake i did generally think that she was hp base and she is on the first form which makes the aura completely pointless uh didn't really think that through did i uh but hey you can see here mistakes always made that is part of life we she will get some extra debuffs as well uh, which will help increase the damage. You can see here we still have like the two free buffs up here. Uh, we will probably lose the uh, attack up for the next turn, but that's perfectly fine. Let's slow this down so you guys can kind of see this. Uh, 160k more or less. Uh, honestly, the damage is not like crazy good, right? But she can definitely do some damage. I won't deny that factor. And you see there, it's around about 40,000 on the A1. So the A1 definitely could do with a slight buff. Now, I would say she does need a slight buff in her kit, mainly with a second form, just so she can balance out a bit more with the other mythicals like Carnage and Mesomar, which are definitely way more uh, impactful throughout the fights, in my opinion. You will see me use her in a live arena videos next week. So definitely go check out them videos. I will probably, there will be one, one or two fights where she'll be good, perfect match for my roaster. She does have to battle with uh, Sigfoot. She does have to kind of battle with Dark Smiles, Carnage, uh, Sung Wang as well. So there's like a lot of competition ahead of her. 
but you know it is what it is and in the day you kind of got to work with what your roster kind of can give you now i'm going to go ahead and look for a couple of teams that would make sense to use her in go second uh this could be a style of team that we could try to entertain so we have a georgie with a uh necrid which can be very uh hurtful if we're not careful so this would be something that we'll probably look at uh i will probably get locked out there so i would like to take increase attack in all fairness but i don't see how we can kind of squeeze it in uh we'll probably go something like this double nuke is pretty strong against these style of teams and she is she would be very good against warlord and Yuma Cone because she can flip forms, right? Which is going to be super, super key for that. And that is a good side about her because you've got the Barbarian who will do way more damage, but he is a lot more prone to lockout overall. So she's not an awful champion, but again, she won't be my first pick for sure. So we, we go here, we'll let them take the turns, and uh, we do have UDK to protect us, or what well, was meant to protect us anyway um so you see here we are locked out we can't do the abilities that we want to but hey ho it is what it is we're probably going to go ahead and lose this right now it looks like it's a very strong georgie build in all fairness so it's not going to be that embarrassing but it's not a good way to start off arena showcase uh well, actually i think we can still save this uh with this last is going to come in and save me isn't he uh which we'll see like so uh, let's have a look. Yeah, Allied Attack doesn't do anything here. And we can just go ahead and do the block revive. It's not, this is not a good showcase of her. This is more of a showcase of Narcissus, but we'll go ahead and finish this fight. So, um, I'm basically trying to show like the utility of Go Second, but my reaction on UDK didn't actually proc, got triple reaction, uh, which he didn't, was able to showcase uh i suppose this can kind of be a good color team let me just check when udk should have triple reaction i don't feel like he procced it yeah we do have triple reaction i was thinking maybe i'll move gear off him in drawing curse city uh we do have a stone skin duchess which we can use here uh let me just check our speeds so we can go ahead and do this i think she's a little bit slower yes yeah, so she's 220 and then we can have probably a warlord coming in because you do need some type of utility and then hopefully udk does his job in this time and protects us against uh all of the shenanigans that a georgie can do georgie's a very good champion there's no denying that for sure ah so the reaction prop there in our favor which is pretty nice now we're gonna lock out the whole team and you will see here in a minute, she will just basically destroy and delete this team. Now, I'm actually going to play the Unkillable, which will give us more survivability, uh, which can definitely be very good, especially if you have a UDK, because it can protect you against Rodas. Uh, and she does do a, a, potentially she can do a double hit if the passive procs with the A1. I'm going to go ahead and play the Decrease Attack, because it makes sense to do that. And if we're not quick, then Georgie will kill us. So that's something that we will have to be quick about. Uh, and he's got two turn meter boosts, so he could potentially still win this if uh, Cyclone Magic procs. You'll see here, we've still got the increased attack up. And so then we basically delete the whole team like so. And that's how beautiful she can be, right? Definitely depends on the right team. Sigford will delete her. Again, another power creep and showing you how uh, how much the power creeps jumped over a short period of time of her coming into the raid. She hasn't been in raid very long for sure. This team is a bit of a joke to kind of compare and the rest. I wouldn't use her against a Taurus Gamerish. I don't feel, don't think she would be that unity, be that good. Potentially we can do something like this. There's a lot of armads around, which kind of makes it a little bit tricky to showcase the champion because armads can just simply delete someone. Now, it's the first time I've seen a Rolus in the immunity set. 
which is uh obviously me not being uh, up to date with the meta that's me being sarcastic by the way um which is definitely a new one for me you can actually go ahead and try provoke um low accuracy champions like low resistant champions like nukas uh cc champions like armads as well if you can get the provoke off that could be quite cool uh if you got a five star blessing you'll get extra 90 accuracy anyway which could be usable just try not to get yourself sheep she's not too bad with sheep but if you do that a2 you can definitely have a chance of doing it and she doesn't really need the pinpoint because she doesn't get the full utility from that we can go ahead and basically take out the armad here and because we're facing killable it keeps us alive we do play an extra hit on the rodus there he's going to go down like so and you can still see we got the unkillable up which again does really help with her survivability overall so you know that's definitely a good way to use her for sure um i don't know if there's any more teams me this high can do anything i suppose we can have a look at this team if even if if i'm being honest it's a bit of a laugh uh, for this so we're going to come in with like a speed team setup we'll come in with a warlord as well because monkey can be an issue and i don't really fancy using mr sheep talking about armads because armads is just so op warlord is strong but i wouldn't say warlord is crazy op these days with mythicals in raid still very strong still obviously very s tier that's not what i'm saying but you can see here that provoke is in coming in hand. Uh, we can go ahead and play through. We've got five debuffs on us right now. We're going to place a shield, which gives me number six. We'll place this on Ronda. It's basically it's trying to land as much debuffs on her as possible. Now, she can do deep buffs, which is great. She can definitely come in and do some stuff. I think we've got a couple of weak hits there, which definitely doesn't help. And obviously, again, with like any nuker, actually, that is not void, which will have this problem of trying to uh, showcase them in certain aspects with free kit, etc. as well. But that's obviously more of a you thing, making sure that you pick the right nukers. Is she going to be someone I bring in all the fights? No, for sure. Uh, another problem that she does have problems with is in Harmony because she does get like a lot of ignore defense which is a issue for her for sure i can see her being quite good against the barbarian in all fairness uh because her being strong affinity as well uh and then you can probably be good against narciss if not careful uh but there's not much i can really do here because all the rest of these teams are looking pretty op uh i just want to tap this team because he's got him in here so i kind of want to see what this player is trying to do obviously it's troll week with midweek defenses and we're all trolling each other i'm gonna bring armads in here just for rx security and just check my armads build and kind of see what's going on right odin is a very good champion and can be someone that causes you a problem or two and obviously you have in harmony's passive as well so we can see here we're gonna get some stuff i'm gonna sheep odin oh, he's got lightning cage on all of them so he's trying to troll i suppose maybe that's what he's trying to do here uh i'm gonna place the unkillable to protect us a little bit brownie can actually remove um unkillable so that's something that we have to be careful of because of the a2 steals two buffs okay that's interesting to see from him. Definitely actually kill my armads. As you can see here, she's taking a bit of a battering, but it's kind of nice. And yeah, Odin's been able to save them. And she doesn't, this is the thing, like she just needs a little tweak, being able to ignore block damage like Mesua can do. Um, and some bits of bobs going on. But that's one way of doing it anyway let me go ahead and show you the builds and i kind of was just a bit curious about that team and i'll show you two builds one for hydra one for uh arena that we are running and i would recommend to run 
Okay, so for a uh, Hydra build, Slayer is definitely the best way to go. Six piece or nine piece Slayer. Maybe even six piece Merciless could be a, a cool thing to do. Or nine piece Merciless, if you can get it, because it's return, would be pretty strong. Uh, these are the stats that are coming in right now with uh, my Blood Mode for Hydra. So you can see fairly good speed, good critical damage. Ignore defense and attack. Sorry, let me go to the second form so you guys can kind of see what I'm kind of looking at. So these are the stuff that we was looking at. Um, and then I was using impulse basically, and then four piece savage. You can also go crawl as well. And then blessings for Hydra, I would probably go cruelty, uh, unless it's six star, and then crush and ram. Uh, you could also potentially go. Harvest cast as well, depending on how many buffs you got, especially if you want it for arena as well. I've got live harvest on her. I'm not I am missing books at the moment on her. Uh I will book her second form, probably won't book her first form, in all fairness, because you know it's hard to get books and I'm still booking out Dark Smiles as well. Uh her masteries are more tailored towards arena, so these are not the best masteries. So we are going to go ahead and look at our trusted, um, trusted braid, braid bro, right? So this would probably be something I would look at, probably Hammer Smasher for uh, Hydra. And then if you have like a Samuel, you could come in with something like this as well. Life Drinker Key for this. You could also go War Master if you wanted uh, for her, but I would probably go Hammer Smasher for my account because I'd want as much ignore defense as possible. And then we're going to go ahead and actually tailor her build now for the arena, which is where I would probably uh, recommend to use her. Now, we are missing some stats here. Uh, so we've got four-piece stone skin and four-piece savage, which is what I kind of wanted for, for like go second teams. Now, champions like Marius, and honestly, will kind of stopped me using her so much but um she's more of a backup nuker if i'm honest she will get a bit more ignore uh a bit more uh, critical damage in her build and i still got quite a lot of attack uh speed as well that i want to bring to a uh, build i want to about 230 240 speed in the stone skin obviously if you can get reaction as well we're pretty solid on her if you don't have the stone skin accessories and that's about it from me today hopefully you enjoy this um i appreciate you guys watching i know it's been a long one and hopefully you have that if you have any questions please let me know down in the comments or you can go ahead and uh hang out on my streams on twitch which is grim reaper tv rage you'll find that in the comments as well uh, where i answer any questions and offer account help uh and also you can go ahead and jump in my discord which is where i'm available as well pretty much 24 7 unless i'm sleeping eating or whatever <laughs> i will let you guys think about that last one anyway that's it for me today i appreciate you guys watching to the end i've been grim i'll see you in the next one